So now in this video, we're going to look at a 78L05 that uh, I got from this new kit that I bought. And uh, there's 10 of them in this kit. Most of these have either like 2 or 5 components. This particular one has about 10. So if you have a higher voltage than you desire, in this case 7 to 30 volts, according to uh, this right here, but you need 5 volts, this is a component that you can use at a lower current. Here is the higher current version of it right there. It can dissipate more heat and whatnot. But in any case, we have the uh, pin layout right there. Looking at the flat side, left pin is one, middle pin is two, right pin is three. So one is the output, two is ground, and three is the input. It is in the uh, TO92 package right there, the TO220 looks like that. So I'll zoom back a little bit and uh, you can see some of the components there. In any case, that cost about $20 right there on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link down in uh, the description of my affiliate link ad to uh, that product. But in any case, here we have a schematic. So the uh, LM7800 series integrated circuit data sheet is the easiest to find if you type in 78L05 right there. So uh, Texas Instrument has that data sheet and uh, they show the uh, capacitors that you see there for using it. So as I said before you can take uh, 7 volts in up to 30 volts in doesn't matter what the voltage is it will output 5 volts. That is what the uh, integrated circuit is intended for. The uh, component that I have from this kit when I looked at it closely you could see that there was WS on there so I found the uh, WS 78L05 data sheet and uh, it doesn't show the capacitors on the data sheet but I'm not going to use them anyways I do need though a capacitor from the uh, full positive supply to uh, ground right here uh, that's a couple pins on the integrated circuit because I'm not getting the full 5 volts. I'm getting like half of it if I don't have that capacitor there. So we need to stabilize the input. That may be because of my power supply or whatnot. The uh, value that I picked there was just because I happened to have it on the board already off to the side. And uh, apparently it's high enough that it's going to work. So I'll try to remember to demonstrate it working and not working later on. So in any case, I always check the uh, data sheet for the particular one you're using. As I said, the LM version, the data sheet that I came across, is Texas Instrument. They have a lot of good data sheets. And uh, so I don't know if the uh, WS version has really any uh, differences, but uh, one difference with the uh, data sheet is that uh, for the uh, maximum recommended input, the uh, WS version says 20 volts, whereas the Texas Instrument LM version says 30 volts right there but uh, they both have an absolute maximum of uh, 30 volts, uh, both of them. Now, when it comes to a uh, power dissipation, here's one thing I want to mention. There's a lot of uh, op amps and different things out there that they will shut down if they start getting too hot or something. They'll start limiting current so that they don't overheat. So you don't have to worry about uh, damaging them, hopefully. But in uh, any case, for the most part, if it says internally limited when it comes to a power or internal thermal overload protection the uh, LM version actually has both of these depending on where you're looking at the uh, data sheet but uh, for the WS version all I saw was internal thermal overload protection near the top and uh, so that means they're going to limit current as needed to keep from overheating you don't have to worry about their power uh, rating. It doesn't even give a power rating that I could find. So here we are on the board. Here is the back of the, uh, even though it's in a transistor package, it's an integrated circuit. There's a lot of transistors and stuff in it and different uh, things. But in any case, there's a uh, pin one because flat side is to the right. Pin one, pin two, pin three. Up here is the uh, input will connect the positive supply. But uh, the circuitry down here is built for five volts from my last video. So that's why I grabbed uh, this integrated circuit to uh, power 5 volts. We're going to give a higher supply voltage though. 
And uh, so you can see we got these two pins there. I'll plug in the positive alligator clip from the uh, power supply. So the uh, middle pin to the uh, top pin. So our input and uh, ground right there. So ground is the same for both the uh, integrated circuit here and for the load. And uh, so that's a 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad. Same thing right there. I needed to uh, stabilize the power. So in any case, uh, that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. We'll zoom back. And uh, if you saw my last video, hopefully you uh, know this circuit, but uh, really doesn't matter uh, too much. It's a pretty simple circuit. So we're going to uh, put the alligator clips to uh, those two points. And I have jumpers to uh, power both rails at five volts now. So now we got uh, seven. The LED is off because I have to uh, move this uh, magnet to trigger it. It's a timing circuit. It's gonna stay lit for about 10 seconds right there. And then it'll turn off. But in any case, there you can see we got about uh, 10 milliamps right there. And uh, actually I put the magnet back to turn it off. There we go. And uh, looks like we got about four. So that's with uh, seven volts at the supply. And really quickly, I'm gonna remove the capacitor. Now you can see that uh, we have a problem there. So it's uh, it's not working without the capacitor the way that it should. So I'm going to uh, quickly put the capacitor back. And uh, so sometimes these circuits will work without the capacitor. I don't know if it's a problem because the power supply is not stable enough or what. But there we go. We got the capacitor back and the circuit is working the way it should. So we can adjust the supply voltage right now. This is the voltage going to the uh, integrated circuit. And uh, so probably best to stay under 20 volts or whatever. But I'm just gonna jump right up to uh, 30 volts. And you can see current's not going up. That's because the uh, integrated circuit basically acts kind of like a variable resistor. It uh, limits the uh, voltage by kind of opposing the current more. And uh, there we go. You can see that LED is not brighter. We don't have more current flowing even though we have a higher voltage because it's outputting five volts to the rail. So now I got the multimeter ready to measure voltage and I ran into a problem. It appears we fried that uh, 78L05 that we were using before. So I replaced it with this one and now the circuit appears to be working just fine. And uh, so we'll look at that uh, coming up. But I'm guessing 30 volts was uh, too much for it. I actually had this up to a uh, 20. I'm reshooting this scene. But in case, we'll go back up to 20. I'm gonna stick with 20 and uh, maybe uh, use this integrated circuit a bit and see if it lasts longer with 20. So it had an absolute max of uh, 30 and maybe the LM version made by a Texas Instrument can actually handle the 30 volts whereas these are probably cheaper. They can't, I don't know. That's what I'm assuming at the moment because they are internally limited to uh, protect themselves. They should not be uh, getting damaged like that. And uh, so in any case, as long as you stay within the uh, voltage rating that they are rated for. So there we got 20 at the supply and uh, then you can measure five out there. And uh, so it looks like maybe a spec below five, but 4.99 is practically five right there. It's uh, not gonna be exactly five and that is actually pretty close to exactly five. So that's with uh, 20 volts and you can see with uh, if you get closer to five volts with seven, how accurate it still is right there. So it's really good to uh, take voltage measurements whenever you're studying basically anything about voltage. It will help you to uh, understand what's going on. So I falsely triggered it somehow with uh, the uh, meter there just by touching the alligator clip. But there you can see uh, seven right there, pretty close to a spot on. and. Uh, we go here and there you can see it's it's five right there and uh, we could either go there they share a common uh, ground the uh, power supply and the uh, little integrated circuit there ground is in the same spot right there so that's really about it as i said before i fried the other one we will uh, pluck out this good one right here put it off to the side and replace it with this one so one thing was I noticed there was no current coming out of the uh, power supply. And then 
I tried getting it so that the LED would light up it's not lighting up and since I had the uh, multimeter already to take the measurement so this is when I was getting ready to uh, film this part of the video so it's 7 it was 30 but in any case then we come to the output right there there's zero volts coming out there so we completely fried this it should be five volts coming out so I'm just gonna throw this one away so I don't accidentally use it again I gave it plenty of time to cool down if that was the problem because uh, a lot of these that uh, protect themselves they will output hardly any current while they're warm but then when they cool down they'll start outputting the uh, full current that they can again and uh, so pretty sure this is completely fried so in any case, hope you enjoyed. Check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.